Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today I have for you just a quick video. I wanted to talk about the current wild meta, in part because I think that there are some noteworthy things to mention, and also because I didn't think I had enough time to stream as well as do everything else that I wanted to do today, so this felt like something that I could just cover for, you know, 10 minutes and might be interesting. So from my perspective, Wild has been in a really bad spot for a fair bit now. I think the last time that I really enjoyed Wild was Sunken City, and then I had a pretty good time in Nathria, but ever since then, I think it's been suffering. It's been in need of some help, but recently it actually got it. So we had the nerfs to the Pack Miracle Rogue, as well as Sorcerer's Apprentice, and I really wasn't expecting too much from those nerfs, but I feel like the meta has actually settled in a pretty decent spot. I think the best spot that it's been in for a good while now, and probably the best spot we're going to see for a while yet. I imagine we get new cards, and if precedent says anything, it's going to probably make things worse more than better. So basically my point is, meta's in a pretty good spot right now, we should enjoy it while it lasts. But I'm gonna take you over to the Tempo Storm website where me and the other people who work on the Snap have a tier list of the current meta players. And I wanted to show you the diversity in deck archetypes and talk about some of those decks that represent them. Because I think that not only is there a lot of representation among you know, control, aggro, combo, but the decks that are actually doing those things are pretty good from a play pattern perspective. So anyways, here, let's, let's go over them. Keep in mind, this tier list is a little bit over a week old at this point, so some things may have shifted around a little bit, but generally this is still a very good representation of what's getting played, what's powerful, and how strong it is compared to other decks in the meta. So anyways, in tier 1, we have Egg Hunter, Spell Damage Druid, Aggro Priest, Pirate Demon Hunter, Miracle Priest, and Hostage Mage. So we have Combo, Control Combo, Aggro, Aggro, Tempo Combo, and the purest control deck that exists in Wild right now <laughs> in Tier 1. So already I think our bases are really well covered. Egg Hunter as a combo deck I think can be a little bit frustrating, especially because it punishes you for playing for board, but it is very susceptible to tech cards. So if you're running a value pile like a Reno deck, you have options like Albatross and stuff like that to disrupt your opponent's combo. It's not like things are hopeless. But also, just with things that you would generally expect to play, you have a chance of disrupting them. And if your deck is like Reno Druid or Reno Paladin, where you have a decisive win con that you can ramp to early on, you know, you can, you can beat this. I know that a lot of people don't like to play against combo decks ever, and I do get that to a degree, but not only do I think that this is one of the more sufferable, powerful combo decks, no one's really playing it. This deck is much better for climbing than its play rate would indicate. Spell Damage Druid, I think, is actually probably the most fun deck in the game right now. It's a control combo deck, so against aggro, you're just trying to keep them off your face by time until way later in the game, once they've kind of run out of steam, then you can start working on ending the game with your own win condition. And against slower decks, you're trying to ramp as fast as you can and set up a combination of many different pieces that work together in different ways to OTK your opponent from full. In either case, this is not a deck that kills right away. You need to buy yourself some time in order to set up a big game ending finish. And I think this is one of the best representations of what a combo deck should look like in Wild Hearthstone. So anyways, I think this deck is super cool. Aggro Priest is just Shadow Priest. We're, we're used to that by now. Pirate Demon Hunter is again, it's, it's a pirate deck. We're pretty used to it. I think it's cool that this deck can put a lot of pressure on early, but it doesn't like strictly run out of steam if you endure it for a while. Between Dangerous Cliffside, Field of Strife, and Kurtris Demon Render, you actually have a lot of late game potential as far as ending the game once you've almost ran out of steam. And there's decent enough draw in here that you're not running out of the gas in the early game either. I also think between Dangerous Cliffside and Sigil of Skydiving that this deck offers a slightly different play experience than what we've been seeing from things like Pirate Warrior and Pirate Rogue. So it's like 
an actual different take on a pirate deck and it's kind of refreshing miracle priest is another combo deck that i think is much more tolerable than others so the good versions of this list in my opinion are not running the potion of madness wave of apathy type of nonsense and if they are it really hurts their consistency with this deck you mostly just have to worry about making sure your opponent's board is empty and specifically empty of radiant elementals so there's actually a lot you can do as a slower deck player to interact with your opponent's inner fire combo on the inner fire side of it you have a lot of consistency through creation protocol and bird watching of getting your radiant elemental early to set up your early combo if your radiant elemental goes unanswered or to get out a bunch of grave horrors to just tempo your opponent out of the game right off the bat so what i really like about this is it's not just planning on doing nothing but draw and then make your opponent explode out of nowhere those combo decks i think are boring on both sides of it a lot of the time you have a flexible game plan of kind of being able to do that but mostly you're trying to get a bunch of stats out early and put your opponent in a position to where they have to do something about it or just take a couple of early grave horror to the face so anyways i think it has a very flexible game plan and if you like playing a lot of cards in a turn it's a really good example of a deck that does that without being overly frustrating to play against on the other side of it. So then we have Hostage Mage, which I think is probably the most frustrating experience in Wild right now as far as playing against it. But if you like an actual control play style, not just like a giant value pile, but if you like an actual control play style, it doesn't get any better than this. This is as close to a control deck as you'll ever see in Wild Hearthstone. After the patch, this is the deck that I was most worried about because I really wanted Ice Block as a nerf for Wild. But for whatever reason, the play rate of this deck has gone down, and I think part of that is because people were playing this as a response to Pack Rogue, and Pack Rogue isn't good anymore. So the amount of good matchups this deck has has gone down, and so playing this is more if you want to be playing this than just a really good meta call, I guess. I think a deck like this, it's cool that it exists as long as its play rate remains about what it is, you know? I, I don't want to be playing against this every fourth game. I want to see this, you know, 1 in 20 or something. <laughs> so then I'm not going to go through each and every one of these tier 2 decks, but I think the big thing to notice about it is look at all of these Reno decks in a row. You know, we have Reno Shaman, Reno Priest, Reno Mage, Reno Druid, Reno Paladin, Reno Warrior. And when we were putting this snapshot together we actually ended up cutting reno hunter because no one was really playing it but it's good reno decks have this solid backbone right now where they all kind of play the same but they also all kind of bring their own strengths to the table if you're a highlander enjoyer now is one of the best times to be one in my opinion because which of these you play matters a lot less than it ever has i would definitely adjust the order on these today like i wouldn't put priests so high i think druid needs to be a lot higher but that that's neither here nor there i wouldn't bump them up a tier you know but apart from tier two just being full of a bunch of highlander decks we also have control combo again in odin warrior we have tempo combo again with questline demon hunter and garrot rogue which is pretty much the one non-alex rogue thing that survived secret passage is aggro combo so you have a pretty good representation of decks in tier 2 as well so yeah i just wanted to a keep up my daily video streak but also i wanted to take a moment and point out how good the wild meta is right now compared to a lot of recent metas and showcase kind of why i think that is i've been having way more fun playing wild than i have any time recently I think variety is the number one thing I care about in card games. Like if I'm locked into just a handful of things, it doesn't matter what that handful is. I get bored. I want to be able to explore different styles of decks without feeling like I'm at a hopeless disadvantage no matter what I try. And I really feel like this meta enables that. I'll leave the link to the snapshot in the description. I will point out that if you copy one of these deck codes the site isn't really equipped to deal with sideboards 
So when you go to a specific page, it will be listed on there what's in the ETC, what's in the Zilliax. So when you copy the code and paste it and your sideboards don't populate, that's why and that's where to find them. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel. I hope you enjoyed this little meta breakdown and thank you so much for watching.